want you to think of authoritarianism that you have suffered in your life. The authoritarianism that your friends have suffered. The authoritarianism that your neighbors have suffered. Whether that's here in the United States or overseas. We've had a couple tough moments, but overall, we put together a lot of people with different opinions. And the one thing that we share is that we know that our lives will be better when the government is gone. I'm Silver Dave, and welcome to Porkfest 2023. Here we're walking into the front gate. I got early bird blood running through my veins. I'm up at six o'clock and no matter how late out I stay. Back here at Porkfest, and it's been a year since I moved here to New Hampshire. I got 3,000 of my closest friends here. It's the 20th year since we chose New Hampshire and people started moving here, and I certainly never expected it to look like this. Welcome to Nude Olympics 2 at Body Freedom Village 3 at Porkfest 20 in the year 2023. Woo! Show us what you've got. Go! Run, 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 run! We are gathered to celebrate the love of two people and their intent to share their lives together. These are the people who we're, we're gonna be around for the rest of our lives after we move to New Hampshire. So I wanted to have a wedding where, you know, all of these people are gonna be able to be at our wedding. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Being a libertarian is you're just losing your whole life. That's part of why so many people ha have special feelings about the free service, because this, for the first time as a libertarian, you can feel like you're actually winning. Liberty is winning. Somehow it caught fire right around 2007 and it's just been upward since then and it's be become a really big deal and obviously made a big impact on the political scene in New Hampshire. And this 20th year is genuinely special. We're seeing all these amazing thinkers. Larry Elder from California, Vivek Ramaswamy came out. We're a pork fest, number of independent minded people who are passionate about the principles of this country. Do we agree with everything? No, but what I discovered was we probably agree on 90% of things. RFK came out. This line is to see Bobby Kennedy Jr. I love Robert, and I love that his message is to heal the divide. I don't think we can do another four years of what we've had. We need a fresh start. One of the conditions for him to come here was to create a gun-free zone. Never seen so many unarmed libertarians in my life. For folks who aren't familiar with Porkfest, Porkfest is a 3,000 person camping event on a massive campground and everyone open carries. There's a lot of firearms here. I heard there was going to be a gun-free zone for RFK's speech here at the pavilion and I disagree with the decision to establish a gun-free zone in a Liberty Festival. I got a uh, Suns Out, Guns Out barbecue going. If you're going to make a gun-free zone, then I'm going to bring every gun in the festival right outside of it. Peaceful coexistence for the win. Help me give a warm Porkfest welcome to a hero, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Fast. This person is our guest, and we are not rude to our guests. So if this is what he feels he needs in order to come here, let's accommodate him so that we can actually have him here and have this dialogue going on. Everything that we care about in this country, everything that made this country great, that made it unique, that made it an exemplary democracy, it all comes from one thing, which is freedom. And if we don't have freedom, we have nothing in this country. So thank you all for standing for liberty. 
We've had a number of controversies. RFK is probably one of the biggest ones just because for one event out of a thousand events, we have a gun-free zone. Also, the New Hampshire Democrats gave a kind of veiled warning to RFK that he ought not come to Pork Fest because we are dystopian extremists. Oh. Ronnie, honey. I know, I know. We want that because we want to tell the authoritarians, look what's happening in New Hampshire. You don't want to move to New Hampshire. And we want to tell the libertarians, yeah, what's happening in New Hampshire is real, guys. We have so many thousands of libertarians here that people are now kind of uh, breaking off into, into groups. But, you know, they don't necessarily get along. We had an incident at Pork Fest. You're being aggressive. You need to stop. Soapbox Idol was pretty much inspired by American Idol. So the thinking was, let's give everyone a soapbox, literally a soapbox, for three minutes, come rant about whatever they feel most passionate about. Over the past week, I've heard a lot of bad words, actually, some really disturbing language. Government, public school, taxation, police, dollars, Department of Defense. I've heard some really Weird terms that you guys should know better than to use. And, and you are corrupting the youth. And then there's three judges like American Idol and, and the rant gets critiqued. The entire event is making fun of people. I'm being incredibly rude to people, you know, throughout the entire event. That's sort of the, the joke. You get a zero, I think, to prove the point. <laughs> A father came on stage and he wanted to talk about vaccine harm and it turned a little ugly. We're dying here. You go to the doctor and you do what they tell you because they're there to kill you, by the way because they killed my 17-year-old six weeks ago. She was given the vaccine, and she was dead within a week. You might be a captivating guy, but I think you're completely insane. All of you who want to associate libertarianism with anti-vax bull, you can do it, but you won't get me along for the ride. The vast majority of vaccines work. They save lives. I don't know what happened to your daughter, man, and I'm sorry to be harsh to you on stage like this, because I am sorry. That's a terrible thing. Terrible. Okay. All right, so I'm sorry that your daughter's look, dead, but look, you're not getting it from me. Zero. No counter argument. It's not about anti-vax. No anti it's down. not anti-vax. Put the Make mic me. down. Make me. This is my country. It's called New Hampshire. Get him off. An unhinged man was on stage and then threatened judges. Uh, and so obviously I think there were some procedural mistakes made in, in terms of allowing that to happen. And I actually went to the stage to try and get in between the parties because things just escalated. Off the stage! Loser, loser, off. Do you wish maybe the end of that went differently? Yeah, I don't think outcome-wise, I don't think it was beneficial. It's not helpful uh, to our movement to be you know, having that fight. But it's also not helpful to our movement to be censoring someone like that and, and trying to make the movement about that kind of derangement. So now that everyone has calmed down. Alu, you won the event. Congratulations. Thank you. I love everyone. Thank you. Even Jeremy, who tried to rob me for a third year in a row. I love you, Jeremy. There are certainly some key moments for the Free State Project that show this path towards self-destruction that they're on. One of those is the fact that Jason Sorens, their founder, he ran for Amherst Planning Board and he lost. I did run for town office and that was an adventure. I'm the one person that everyone knows is a Free Stater and like instantly it's, uh, they're triggered. He posted this really incredible telltale thread about how he thought that the Free State Project movement was more harmful now to their ability to move forward and that he actually thought that they needed to move away from using the Free State Project brand. And for us, that was an amazing pivotal point. Here they are celebrating 20 years. And publicly trying to say, we're doing great, people love us. But internally and in more quiet settings, acknowledging that grant staters do not want them promoting these policies and doing harm in our communities. I'm always going to be associated with the Free State Project. That's something I learned from my election. So I might as well make it as good as possible. I had come to the board with various concerns and to my surprise, they came back and invited me to join the board. <laughs> I've recently rejoined the board of the Free State Project and looking forward to this next phase.
the long and the short of it is we've had some management changes at the board of the Free State Project. One of the most interesting things that happened this past year is that as they had their board shake up, Jeremy Kaufman insisted on having their board meeting broadcast. I assume that this video will be shareable at the end of this? This will be the evidence that the Free State Project will be putting out in terms of its trial. It's going to be proud of what it conducted and, and the evidence that it's presenting. <laughs> Bags of popcorn. We all had a first row seat. What we are doing as an organization is we are trying to act in the best interest of the entire organization. No, you are not. It wasn't actually as dramatic as I think everyone wants to play it. You're going to do tremendous damage to the movement because I think the vision that I have for the Free State Movement has become a tremendously popular one. And that is what you guys feel is threatening to you. Perhaps our biggest donor ever has our said that donor. he will not he will not donate uh, as long as you're on the board. We are a professional organization, even if we are, you know, kind of wild and free. He was behaving badly and unprofessionally. Jeremy Kaufman has been posting racist content across social media platforms as the communications director for the Free State Project. Also as someone who handles the social media accounts for the Libertarian Party in New Hampshire. It affects all of us. We all get tarnished. We with have this people who have tweeted. We have, and we're we, sick of I'm not a racial collectivist. Shut the f up. That is so dishonest. And it you is disgusting of you. It is disgusting. This is not the place It is so, this is, so disgusting. That is so disgusting. I can't disgusting. believe. I'm disgusted. I can't believe. To me, um, there's a very clear standard uh, you know, for racism, which is would you reach conclusions about people on the basis of their superficial characteristics? And the answer for me is never. I've never come close to doing that. Other people have lots of different definitions for racism. Under some of those definitions, I might be a racist, and I just don't care. I think this is a big mistake because this is not, the, the, the grounds are just not here, and I've done a tremendous amount for the movement, and there's gonna be a lot of people who aren't gonna like it. That hate speech and activity had reached a level that it would harm the Free State Project, then they decided to take action. We should go around, Jason, how do you vote? Carol Ann? Hi. Mark? Although, yes. Let the record reflect that 1702, Jeremy left the board. I don't want to, to use this interview series to, to, to have that discussion about what it was. It's to have a successful movement. You don't want to be encouraging people to be turning on each other, you know, stepping on each other to try to get to the top of something. You want to be rewarding people for, you know, their external success. No one here actually wants to do this, but this is the only way we can actually remediate some of the brand damage we're experiencing, bring some sponsors and donors back into the organization. On the plus side, I think now we can at least focus on, on actual board business and get things done for the FSP. Buckle up, folks. Yeah, yeah. it's not over. Part of the timing of this, I suppose, was we decided we were going to hire a new executive director. I'm Eric Brakey. I am the new executive director of the Free State Project, and I'm also currently serving my third term in the Maine State Senate. I made a promise to my constituents to serve two years. So I'll be making the move later this year uh, in 2024 once someone has been elected to take my place. I've been at this project of trying to promote liberty for 12 years now, ever since the Ron Paul campaign in 2012, which I was the state director of in Maine. I am enjoying an ability to step back from being directly political. I don't think we're meant to hold elected office forever. Particularly if you love liberty, it starts to eat away at your soul after a while. My job is just going to be to communicate with the libertarian diaspora that's spread around the country and even get a good fraction of them to recognize that uh, New Hampshire is the libertarian homeland. The energy here, it's kind of like the Ron Paul campaign never ended in New Hampshire. It's kind of like the campaign ended in 2012 and people in New Hampshire didn't get the memo. <laughs> so they've just kept moving forward, kept advancing liberty, and it's nice to come back and feel like I'm a part of that again. How do you feel about 
the session. Uh, I think these conversations can be healthy and valuable, but frankly, I don't know how that would work in practice. You can call me a skeptic. They're still trying to minimize that part of it, while the reality is that you know most of these free staters who moved here signed the pledge to move to New Hampshire to try to take over state government and use the threat of secession with the federal government. And actually board members of the Free State Project are actively organizing for secession. I'm testifying today in support of CACR 20, which is similar to last year's CACR 32. Secession is going to be on the docket again for this New Hampshire legislative session, and we'll see what organizing the Free State Project does around it. The measure before us today, CACR 20, would declare independence from the United States of America for New Hampshire if the national debt reaches $40 trillion. It gives us, Granite Staters, the democratic opportunity to decide if we want to stay with the sinking ship of the federal government and its $40 trillion of federal debt, or if we can do better as Granite Staters. The majority of Granite Staters don't agree with the Free State Project ideology, and they certainly don't want to see them do real harm to public services. The House will be in order. The motion before us is any speedy to legislate on CACR 20. State your motion. Indefinitely postpone CACR 20. It will take three-fifths of our body to proudly uh, vote the green button to indefinitely postpone this legislation so we do not have to discuss it again this year. 341 voting yay, 24 voting nay. The motion for indefinite postponement passes. <laughs> I see the Free State Project fizzling out. If I had a dime, actually if I had a Bitcoin for every time someone told me it was fizzled out, I'd be very rich right now. They've peaked and they've kind of come over that wave and I don't think they're gonna be able to, to rebuild in the way that they hope. I think we are on the cusp of the next wave. We're the people who are causing the ructions on secession and on school choice and the Croydon folks. The Free Staters are trying to slash the budget so that we won't have the money to pay for our kids to go to school. I wasn't saying get rid of schools. I was saying let's actually spend the right amount of money so that the kids will get an education. We do civil disobedience. Leave them alone! run for office. I'm running for U.S. Congress again. We're sort of that first wave, and I think what Eric Brakey represents is next wave. It's been 20 years. We know there's proof of concept. There's that Lindy effect, that idea that the lifespan of something is proportional to how long it's lived. And, and so the longer that New Hampshire exists as the libertarian homeland, like the, the stronger that gets. We have actually done like this cute amazing little miracle. Hey, would you like to actually build and live in a free society? I know it seems impossible where you live, but in New Hampshire, we're actually building it. So please come and help us. And if enough of us bandy together and stand together, we can actually stop the onslaught of tyranny, at least in our lives. I don't think I can fix America, but I think I can fix the Granite State. There's a reason we make decisions collectively as a community. There's a reason we invest in things like public education. The majority of Grant Staters do not want them here. We are the people of freedom, and we've finally found our forever home. Thank you.